Uh, today's topic is parotid gland part 1. Before moving on to the topic, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Ara Bene, a third year MBBA student. So part 1 of this lecture consists of introduction, parotid bed structures and relations of parotid gland. The other topics such as the blood supply, nerve supply, lymphatic drainage and uh, also the clinical anatomy comes in part 2 which would be aired tomorrow. Okay, let's move on. Before going into the topic as such, let's start with a case scenario so that it will be interesting and we need to know, right, uh, why we had to study about the parotid gland, why it's that important. Okay, a 10-year-old girl presented with a complaint of a rapidly growing painful swelling on face in front of the ear on the left side. So what was her complaint? She complained of pain and what is the site? on the face in front of the ear that is this region between the ear lobule and the cheek she also told that the pain increases while taking meals and while talking but subsides to some extent after finishing the meal so this is the aggravating factor and this is the relieving factor on examination the physician found that the ear lobule is lifted on the affected side so probably there is a swelling in this region that's why the ear lobule has lifted. Okay, uh, if there is a swelling, it has several etiologies. And two main basic important etiologies is the infection etiology and oncological. We all know the tumors do not present with pain. So probably there should be an infectious etiology. She was finally diagnosed as a case of acute parotitis. Paro stands for parotid and itis stands for inflammation. So, what is the most common cause of acute parotitis? It is none other than mumps. I think you all would have heard of uh, this vaccine called as MMR, measles, mumps and rubella. That is the disease which presents with acute parotitis. Okay, uh, let's move on to the topic. Introduction. The parotid gland is the largest of the three salivary glands. So, parotid gland is a salivary gland that is an exocrine gland which secretes saliva and it is the largest of the three salivary glands which are the parotid gland, the submandibular gland that is the gland which lies below the mandible and the sublingual gland that is the, la the gland which lies below the tongue. Where exactly is this gland located? So it's located in this region called as the retromandibular fossa. Retro behind, mandible obviously we know behind the mandible and fossa is space. This retromandibular fossa is also called as the parotid bed. Okay, now let us see the structures which line the retromandibular fossa. Just follow up with me. Anteriorly, it is lined by the posterior surface of the ramus of mandible. This is the ramus of mandible, this region and anteriorly it is lined by the posterior surface of the ramus of mandible posteriorly it is lined by the mastoid process superiorly it is lined by the external acoustic meatus and the temporomandibular joint the joint between the mandible and the temporal bone Medially, it is lined by this process over here, which is called as the styloid process. So just imagine this as if we have dissected the region of the temporoman the retromandibular fossa and you have removed the parotid gland. And this portion over here, you see, is nothing but the retromandibular fossa. Okay, fine. Next parotid capsule or the parotid sheath we all know that any structure for that matter in our body has to be having a protective layer to protect it from inertia stress etc so in such a way the parotid gland is enclosed in a fibrous capsule called as the parotid capsule and uh, what exactly is this parotid capsule made of it is nothing but a derivative of the deep cervical fascia fine next let us move on to the external features. So, parotid gland is a three-dimensional structure. 
it resembles a three-sided pyramid with the apex which is directed downwards and uh, these are the following features of the parotid gland it has an apex obviously the apex is pointed downwards and it has four surfaces that is four triangular surfaces the superior surface or the base the superficial surface the anteromedial surface and the posteromedial surface obviously three borders for a pyramid anterior border posterior border and the medial border now let us visualize what i said okay this is the three dimensional pyramidal structure which i said and this is the parotid gland just follow up guys follow as i say this is the anteromedial surface of the parotid gland this part this one this uh, is the anteromedial surface this triangular surface now this is the posteromedial surface then we have the superficial surface superficial surface is the largest of all the surfaces so we have a lot of structures which are related to the superficial surface then we have the fourth surface which is nothing but the superior surface or the base okay we have the posteromedial surface the anteromedial surface the superior surface and the superficial surface four surfaces then three borders the anterior border the posterior border and the medial border the anterior border the posterior border and the medial border four surfaces and three borders and finally we have the apex okay let's move on to the next slide fine uh, we have come to the most dreaded part of anatomy which is relations relations is very easy guys to remember like uh, if we just mug it up then it's not going to stay in our head the more we see in the cadaver when they dissect the more we learn and but uh, as far as it comes to head and neck all the structures are so cramped and even when you guys go for the dissection you won't be able to uh, you know differentiate between the structures so the best is to take an atlas or uh, just study relations with diagrams guys okay? study anatomy with diagrams the more diagrams that you practice the more would you learn okay uh, i have drawn a line diagram for you so that it would be easier for you guys to present it in the paper also um this is the color coding system which i have given uh, the structures which are blue are related to the apex the structures which are in black are related to the base the structures which are in purple are related to the superficial surface the structures which are in red are related to the anteromedial surface and the structures which are in pink are related to the posteromedial surface fine okay first we'll see the structures which are related to the apex uh, this is the retro mandibular vein uh, so this is nothing but a transverse section of the parotid gland uh, though so that's why you see a triangle over here so just imagine the apex is coming towards you uh, so that's how you had to see this uh, just imagine the apex is pointing towards you it's piercing through the screen and pointing towards you so the apex is related to the retro mandibular vein and the cervical branch of the facial nerve these are the two important relations of the apex then we have the structures which are related to the base that is the auriculotemporal nerve this one this structure which is the auriculotemporal nerve and uh, now we will see the structures which are related to the superficial surface we have the skin the superficial fascia these four structures which are nothing but the branches of the great auricular nerve and the parotid fascia parotid fascia is nothing but the tough sheath which uh, lines the parotid parotid capsule is called as a parotid fascia so we have skin superficial fascia branches of the great auricular nerve and the parotid fascia then these uh, structures which i have uh, put in green are nothing but the parotid lymph nodes or uh, the deep and the superficial parotid lymph nodes 
now let's move on to the structures which are related to the anteromedial surface this this region is the anteromedial surface and this region is the posteromedial surface guys the anteromedial surface we have three structures uh, this is the ramus of mandible the bony landmark we have two muscles which are attached to it which is the medial pterygoid muscle and the masseter muscle the muscles of mastication so the structures which are related to the anteromedial surface is nothing but the medial pterygoid muscle and the masseter muscle which is attached to the ramus of mandible now let's move on to the structures which are related to the posteromedial surface that is this bony landmark over here is nothing but the mastoid process the muscles which are attached to the mastoid process are the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the posterior belly of the digastric muscle then this bony landmark over here is nothing but the styloid process and the three muscles which are attached to the styloid process are stylohyoid muscle stylopharyngeus muscle and the styloglossus muscle and the artery over here is the external carotid artery and this sheath which has these four nerves and this vein and the artery uh, this is the internal carotid artery the internal jugular vein and the 11th 12th 9th and the 10th cranial nerves this structure over here is the wall of the pharynx so all these structures which are drawn pink in color are related to the posteromedial surface of the parotid fine we saw the structures which are related to the four surfaces now let us see about the three borders of the parotid gland uh, a small tip to remember the branches of the facial nerve which i'd be talking is 10 zebras bit my cook T Z B M C. We'll see what all these stands for. The structures which are related to the anterior border are the temporal branch of the facial nerve, the zygomatic branch of the facial nerve, the transverse facial vessels, the upper buccal branch of the facial nerve. And then we have the parotid duct over here. These four are the structures which lie above the parotid duct. T for 10, zygomatic Z for zebras, upper buccal B for bit. We have the temporal branch, the zygomatic branch and the upper buccal branch of the facial nerve along with the transverse facial vessels which lies above the parotid duct. Below the parotid duct we have the lower buccal branch of the facial nerve, the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve and the cervical branch of the facial nerve. So B for buccal, my for marginal mandibular branch and C cook that is C for cervical branch of the facial nerve. These three are the structures which are related to the anterior border of the parotid gland which lies below the parotid duct. Now let us go on to the posterior border of the parotid gland. We have the posterior auricular vein, the posterior auricular artery and the posterior auricular nerve, the band structures, the posterior auricular vein, the posterior auricular artery and the posterior auricular nerves.